So we've been retraining a lot of players over the last couple of weeks as we've been finding our feet as we rebuild one of Portugal's fallen giants with Bo Vista. It's been an interesting start to the journey. It's been a crazy challenge with the fact that we are in the transfer ban until the 1st of January. But I think one of the hardest things we've had to deal with is the fact of injuries. So retraining players has almost become a must. So in today's episode, we're going to first off start by recapping the games you missed. So we started off after the opening day defeat with a home game against Braga. And we picked up a two-all draw with Helder and Bruno getting us back into it after being 2-0 down. So fantastic there. Another goal for our young 16-year-old winger as well. Always a positive. And that was followed up with a home game against Nacional. And we got a 3-1 victory. We scored, they pegged us back straight away. It was literally, we scored a goal, they went up the other end and scored. But Helder again with that opening goal, another goal for our youngster. Um, Bosnick on the score sheet and our defence midfielder, Kamara. Now, unfortunately, even though we started the season quite well with a draw and a victory in our first three games, we then came up against Benfica. And they were just too good for us. We only got one shot all game, 31% possession. I think 1-0 kind of flatters us. But then we got properly FM'd, as you would say. 18 shots to their three. Uh, they had more possession, but we were just getting our shots off. But we ended up losing a 1-0 to Rio Ave. Uh, Clayton on the score sheet for them. We picked up a few yellows as we were trying to fight our way back into the game. Bit of 1-0 defeat. Back-to-back -back defeats now. Three defeats in our first five. Bit concerning, maybe. Bat them concerns out of there with um, Bosnick picking up two Perez and held our youngster again on the score sheet. He's been fantastic so far. A 4-2 victory away from home against Salta Clara. Really, really pleased. And we have gone back-to-back -back wins with a 2-1 victory with Agra and Bosnick on the score sheet over Gil Vicente. And really pleased with this. Back-to-back -back wins has put us in a really, really solid position. Currently sitting in 11th. We do have game in hand though. Our game in hand could take us up to 7th place. Today we are going to be playing against um, Aroca, who are bottom of the league with only 2 points, and we did beat them in the Allianz Cup in the first round, I think we came up against. It was the first round we played them. Yeah, 3-0 victory at home. Now today, we are travelling to their ground. So here we are in Google Earth, and let's have an away day, shall we? So an away day today, so let's have a look see where we are going to be playing. So as we go all the way in, you can see here, very small place. And if we zoom out a little bit, it's a very small place we're going to be playing. Now, now remember this team. Obviously, I saw a documentary a while ago on them. They are a very unique side, very much um, funded by a man with deep pockets. I'll tell you right now, that pitch does not look playable with the bends it has in it. Just going to say that now. We don't have the footage we had over some of the other stadiums, unfortunately. Uh, can we put a man down? And if we can, how close can we go? We can get here. And maybe this roundabout as well here. Let's have a look, shall we? Not really what I wanted, is it? Not really what I wanted. I mean, maybe we could buy this house. It looks... Certainly looks abandoned. Doesn't, doesn't look the most appealing place at the minute. There's trees all around here. Can we... Where's my man gone? Can we put him on the crossing? If we're on the crossing, can we see anything? Can we see anything? We can see a stand. We can see a stand. We'll take it. There's the stadium. I mean, I, I feel like this, this kind of content is what you are here for. So before we get into today's live, come and continue the journey. A couple of players who are in the middle of retraining. So Vukatic, I'm retraining as a right fullback. Now, yes, he's tackling his own eight, but physically he is decent. He's got good crossing, good dribbling, and good first touch and good passing, etc. I think he could do a good job out there. And we only have one right back, and he's fairly poor. So doesn't really matter if he can or can't do a good job out there. I need him out there. So he is left-footed. Does cause a bit of an issue, but we are, you know, we've got no one else, all right? We had no one else who isn't in our starting 11 who can play in that position. So he's just going to have to suck it up and play in that position. 
So both of our backup strikers also getting retrained. So first off is Mashando, who's getting trained as an inside forward on the right, um, because he's left footed, not like the right back who's trained who's left footed. And also um, Namara is also getting retrained, but out on the left because we just we just short of people basically. So we need people who can play multiple positions. And we don't really have that. So we're a club who can't sign people and doesn't have anyone who can play multiple positions. So we're in the middle of retraining some people in the positions we need. So a couple of things to mention. Bosnik is out injured at the minute. He picked up an injury in the last game. He's going to be out for eight days to two weeks. Now, after this, we have got a international window. So that should give him time to come back. And also our backup right winger, he picked up an injury, came back, and has picked up another injury. He's out for 12 days to three weeks. So a little bit frustrating that he keeps coming back and then getting himself injured. But it is what it is. So, apart from the league updates, nothing much has happened. So we will continue forward and get into the live com. So we're going to go with Gonzalez in goal. Uh, Vukotic, our left-footed right back. Can't move by me. Abascal, Bruno and Ferreira playing a left back who's been fairly decent so far. Four assists and nine. Kamara and Perez in defensive mid. Uh, Perez picked up three goals so far this season from defensive mid. Helder on the right at the age of 16 has four goals and three assists. Sao Pinto in mid central mid who has two goals and two assists from nine age 15. Then Agrov on the left, who does have one goal and five assists so far this season. And then Namora leading the line, who has no goals and no assists in five sub appearances. He That means he's either going to be dreadful today or he's going to score three and look amazing. So they are seven to five favourites. The draw's five to two, we are seven to four. A little bit offensive considering their form and our form. We've won back to back games. Um, we have decent form. They have woeful. They are 18th. We 11th. So the admission is £7 to get into today's game. Uh, we should just check. I did say we would do this. We will check who their key players. Their key player is Jason. Gotta say I'm all for that. I'm all for just that simple one-named guy. He's a 30-year-old Spanish fullback. We do need a fullback in the summer. Um, and he's just called Jason. I mean... Yeah, why not? Why not? I'm all for that. I'm all for the fact that their key player is just called Jason. Right. So we have Helder and Dora Salpinto in attacking mid. I've got to say we, we struck lucky with the intake which has come into this squad before we've took over with them two players. Absolutely over the moon with them. Right, come on. Aruka at their ground. Ball Vista, back-to-back -back wins. Can we make it three wins in a row? Which, for a club who's going to finish bomb off the table, no question about it, is insane. It's insane. We do have one more bit of news after the match. I'll show you. Oh, we actually have a highlight. It's for them. So they have ball just inside their own half, passing between the two centre-backs, goes forward in the midfield, pass through the lines again. A strike from distance goes over, but it is a chance for Aruka, who with this point would move off the bottom of the table. They would go joint on points with uh, Mareres. Mareres. I, I need to look the name here. Ball in though. How did he miss? How did he miss? I thought we were going 1 0. Honestly, thought we were going 1 0. Okay, they have a free kick. Comes in. We, I think we almost just set up a goal there. I mean, if in doubt, help the opposition. Mavarense. 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 How the hell do you say that name? And going on managing them. Jesus. Who are you managing on Football Manager? I can't tell you. Can't say you. Aruka again. Oh, it's going to be a red card. Bruno. Bruno getting a red card. Oh, why? As soon as I saw that tackle come in, you know what's going to happen. We're going to have to, we're going to, have to take off um, Dora Pinto and bring on another academy 16-year-old in central defence for the second half of the game. We are 1-0 down. I'm going to say... 
We simply need to be better. But at the same time, just couldn't ask us to waste a bit of time because we downed the 10 men. If we can sneak a goal, great. If we can sneak away with a point, also great. Can't believe Bruno got a red card. He's the man we're going to talk about after the after the match. Um, the only bit of news that's actually come out in between the games, apart from that's just been us retraining some players, just trying to get some actual depth to our squad in terms of some positions. They go 1-0 up. I'm hoping it's offside because the assistant flagged. And normally if the assistant doesn't flag, it's onside. Yeah. The assistant flagged. When the assistant flags, you know it's offside. That's normally what I've realised on FN24. Come on. Keep working hard. Keep working hard. So we are just going to pause it. I'm just going to make sure we are dropping our tempo and wasting time a little bit more and playing for set pieces. Um, and we will just make a couple of changes just to make sure we do have fresh legs in some of the the difficult positions on the pitch. Go with that, and I think that hopefully will see us all the line salvage a point in a game where we've got 10 men and a 16-year-old in central defence, which I think at this level is always a risk. They do have a corner, though, right at the end of the game. Jason almost lives up to his name and gets the winner but it does look like we are going to sneak a point which we have and i will take that hands on hips it's things just didn't go our way um i do have to mention that our striker still hasn't scored a goal but hopefully for the next game our best striker's back bruno bruno is leaving us so his contracts are now the end of the season I've ended up agreeing a deal to sell him to Sporting on the 2nd of January. Now, bear in mind that our transfer ban... Where does it say on this? Anywhere? General? Uh, yeah, it says behind my, behind my face. The transfer ban is till the 1st of the 1st. So, he is going to move on for 1.4 million, all up front. Uh, that did also, because it shows on your transfer budget straight away, I could adjust a little bit and actually make sure we weren't in the red for our wages for once. So that's going to be useful because it should pull us roughly even money for the season, which is huge. Now, we haven't played Porto, Benfica or Sporting at home. Them kind of games will bring in bumper crowds, which will help us financially as well. Um, in terms of our income so far this season, TV revenues... The biggest of 1.79. And then sponsorship was 830k. Gateway to 200. Merch at 100k. Expense wise, this is ridiculous by when you see it. Staff wages at £740,000 is our biggest by mile. Ground maintains of 419. Then players wages 375. We've spent over double our playing wage budget on our staff. Over double. Now, what I would say is that did involve me sacking a manager. Sorry, sacking that loan manager who was on a three-year deal on 3.7k a week. But we had to move him on. It worked out that we would have spent another 190 grand over the time. No, it was more than that. Might have been about 250. Just on his wages, if I'd have kept him compared to the compensation I had to pay. But our staff wages massively need to come down. It's just stupid the money we're spending on some people like uh, my wage is stupid my assistance is stupid a goalkeeper two goalkeeper coaches on 3.2k each a week and a director of football on 2.7 well the one of the goalkeeper coaches and the director of football can both go in the summer um and then it does get rid of most of the big earners in terms of the staff but we've just got to keep developing keep pushing on uh, one of the issues I'm fighting with at the minute is the players are concerned about lack of squad depth and seem to think I can do something about it. Now, I did put out a tweet about that saying that I hope this is fixed in Football Manager 25. They've got an extra five months to do that because there's nothing I can do about it. We can't sign anyone, yet the players somehow think it's my fault that we lack squad depth and I need to fix it now. It's like I can't do that. But that's it for today's episode. We are going to crack on with some games. I think we might actually come back. Um, episode 4 and then 5, 6. Yeah, I think we might come back at the end of January. 
So it's going to be a big chunk of games. It's going to be about eight or nine league games. But in the next episode, it will be a bumper transfer window special. Maybe we could actually come back in the last week of the transfer window and do it live. That's an option. We'll never think about it. Because I'm going to record it on a day where I could actually do that. I've been Paul, also known as the Northman. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.